Hey everyone, got another quick tip for you today. I just wanted to go over how to rig and skin with joints in Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing, just to keep things really simple, I'm just gonna drop down a cylinder and let's go ahead and give this guy some more segments. So we're gonna wanna select our cylinder and hit C to turn it into a polygonal object. And the main window we're going to worry about is going to be over here under character. And because we're going to come back here a lot, I'm going to go ahead and select this little bar here. And that'll just pin it. It's just a little easier to get to. I'm going to middle mouse button click and go to our front view. And we're going to want our joint tool. And with our cylinder selected, again, I'm going to hold control and click. And that's going to place our first joint. And then I'm going to move up while still holding control. I'm going to click here. And then again here. So let's take a look at what that did. Over here on our cylinder, we have a new hierarchy. So the first click gave us the root and all in our first joint, and then each subsequent click gave us a new joint as a parent. Might be worth noting, if you were to have the cylinder placed in some weird place in 3D space and try to rig from there, so like we're in our front view and it's not in the middle, if our cylinder is selected and I go to my joint tool and go ahead and click, control click, middle mouse, it actually was able to figure out that it wanted to put the joints in the middle of that cylinder despite it being in some weird spot in 3D. We've got our joints and we need to tell them to bind to the cylinder and to do that we need to go back over to our character tab here. We want to apply a skin object and make that a child of our cylinder. And the skin object just says tank the points of the cylinder and bind them to joints based on their weight which we don't have. So selecting our cylinder, we're going to go to tags and go to rigging tags and select our weight. And now you can see we have a little drop down menu where we can place our joints that we're going to apply our weights to. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and lock this panel. That way I can click out of it and it'll stay here. I'm just going to go ahead and shift click all of our joints and bring them into here. Go and unlock that. Okay. Now it is still not working. Now we need to tell these bones what kind of weight that they have on the object. So to do that, we go to our character manager, weight manager, gives us a whole new window. And this is pretty simple. So if I select my joints tab here, you'll see that we have all the joints that are associated with the weight tag that we currently have selected. So if I click out of that, it clears out. I'll click the weight tag. There they are. You can also click through your joints in your hierarchy and you'll see that they are reflected within weight manager. Okay, so now what do we actually do with this? The quickest and easiest way to weight your joints would be to select all of your joints. And then we're going to go ahead and apply one of these commands up here. And the one we're looking for is auto weight. And we're going to hit calculate. And there it is. So now if I rotate a joint, you see it is actually working the way it should. Also, just for good practice, I'm going to select all my joints go to coordinates, and I'm just going to do freeze all. This is good because when you're happy with where your joints are placed, once you hit freeze all, it stores their transforms and rotations over here so that all you're really worried about now are these ones here, which are now zeroed out. So let's say I was messing around with this joint and then I moved it into some weird, crazy way. And rather than trying to move that back to where it was, I'm going to hit shift C and hit uh, reset transform. And that just puts them all to zero. And also just to prove that you can just type these all back to zero. Okay, so now let's uh, modify some of these weights a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our joints. I'm gonna click this tag to give us all of them. And let's smooth it out a little bit. So if we go to options, you see we have mirror and smoothing. And with this, we're just gonna go ahead and hit smooth. See, so it smoothed it out a little. Let's increase the distance. So this is just looking at how far between points is it going to apply the smoothing? There we go. So that's quite smooth. And of course, this does work if you were to apply, like if I were to go here, hold Alt and click on subdivision surface, that all applies on top of it. What if I want a little bit more control over this? So I'm gonna select our tag again and select all our joints. I'm going to go to command and this is where you get some more rigid control over your joints. So I'm going to go ahead and click on zero, which will just remove all the weight from all the joints. Now nothing's working. 
So if I select my cylinder, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of that subdivision surface. Don't need that. So if I select my cylinder, and if I go to faces mode and hit UL to go to loop selection, and let's say I want oops, all these points to be applied to the green bone, right? Well, now I can select joint two. That's our right? Yeah, that's our green bone. And then go to commands, mode set to absolute, strength 100%, apply selected. So now the weight is 100% applied to the green bone on the points that I have selected. So now we have a much, yeah, a much starker difference. It's not, it doesn't have that smoothness that we got from the auto weighting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get UI, that it's just the inverse Again, select our red bone commands, and we're going to go ahead and apply selected. So now those are under control of the red bone. Pretty nifty. And of course, we can just zero this out and we're good to go. And if at any point you're just like, okay, uh, I selected exactly what I wanted to be applied to these bones. Let me smooth it out a little bit. Of course, you just you know, select your tag. There's all of our bones, select them all. And we're going to go to our options and let's turn smoothing down a little bit. Like I want a hard crease, but not that hard. I'm going to hit smooth. <laughs> Maybe click it a few times. There you go. All right. And if you want another way to apply your, your weights to your geometry, you can select your mesh, go to your weights tag, and we're going to do the weight tool. And if you click on whichever bone, you can go in and actually paint where you want that bone to have its influence. You can see adding joint two, removed it from joint one, because our brush is set to add at 100%. Of course, you could bring this down. And maybe I want, you know, 50% from the red painted right here. So now there should be a little bit left over from the green and so on. And then of course, you know, you could change this from add to smooth and kind of blend that out a little bit. Maybe turn the strength up a little more. There we go. So you could go through and hand paint this if you wanted to. And of course, you'd spend a lot more time on it than that, but you get the point. So quick recap. Skin Deformer tells your object to move with your bones, but it does nothing unless you have some weights applied. And that's where you apply your weight tag. And then you drop your joints into that tag. And from there, you can start messing with your weights. I have had to look this up a hundred times, and that's why I made this tutorial. And I hope it saves some of you guys some time as well.